Hello another... and welcome to Hello and welcome to another episode of Serial Mongolo Stories, um, where every week we answer um, a specific question and we invite our um, members and our volunteers and from our community to come forth and share their inspirational stories and what meditation has done for them. And this week's question is, how did meditation change your life? And um, this week we have two new um community members. Um, we have Marco and we also have Ricardo joining us for today, which is uh, so hi and welcome. Hello, I I'm Marco. So without further ado, let's get started with this question, um, which is how did meditation change your life? And I want to start with Marco because he's new and I want to hear about his story. So go ahead, Marco. Okay, uh, my name is Marco and I, I live in Croatia. It's like very uh, strict conservative Catholic country. So I always felt like I'm kind of an outsider on that field. And I, through all my life, I was like searching, you know, like every other person who is like rational, uh, he's looking for the answers in his life. So I was reading a lot of books and I was trying a lot of different things in my life. And I uh, heard about this group in Zen, in, in Zagreb we have that. And I was trying to like take a two day, two day course. And I was there for two days. He was explaining to us the meditation, but I didn't, uh, um, I didn't understand what he was talking about. Maybe because I was, wasn't still ready to understand. So I was, I went home and I was just doing like five minutes a day for months and it didn't work for me. And I, I kind of had a hard time in my life in that these days, that was like seven years ago. And I was searching the internet and I found many uh, movies uh, on the YouTube and on the Wikipedia about Buddhism. And I was like, you know, it's not like it was, it came to me. Finally, I was like, uh, like the teaching of the Buddha. And then I found another group in Zagreb. They were like Mahayana Buddhism. And I joined them and I was there for about four years. But at the same time, when I joined the group in uh, Mahayana, I, I found the uh, Bantis videos on the YouTube. And he was talking about uh, Sati, Satipatthana. And that was so interesting to me. And I was like, Four years I was in conflict, but then I, I couldn't choose to take if, if I want to be in Hinayana or uh, I, I mean Theravadi, Theravada or Mahayana. And like two years ago, I had like bad experience in Mahayana. And I was always thinking about it's not good for me. It's like disrespectful to my teacher if I'm between two teachings and I just choose uh, Bhante's teaching because it was, it was much more suitable for my life and it wasn't that demanding because you just have to meditate in Mahayana just like chanting and, and uh, visualization and it's kind of it's hard to do and you know uh, with meditation in life uh, you can face a, a lot of fears with your meditation like uh, I, I was scared of going to the dentist for like 10 years because uh, uh, of the painful treatment that I got there. And when I started to meditate, it was very uh, clear to me that the fear is another uh, uh, thing that is uh, negative in my life. So I should face that because it's like distracting. So I said to myself, I'm going to go to the dentist. And now after like Two years of doing the meditation with Bhante's teachings, I'm just sitting in the chair and the, the, the pain comes and I'm just noting pain, pain, and it, it's like kind of uh, good. And I, I know that my dentist like asks me if I have any pain and I said yes and she's like surprised because uh, I just wanted to get over it if, if the pain comes and She's gonna stop and you know how it goes and it takes a long time to fix one to see it lose, right? And uh, about other things in my life with the meditation is it helps me with the relationship with my family because 
uh, I can always give them uh, a good advice, uh, even if they don't wanna hear it, you know, it's so hard. The other week, the Vante had a teaching about uh, how easy it is to have a mundane life and so how hard it is to have a, uh, you know, the life on the path. And it's, it was surprised to me. And now I can see it why, uh, why he was talking like that, because it's, it's clear that, that some people don't want to be uh, better. They just want to continue indulging themselves in this kind of world. So uh, I just want to be a good example to people with my practice and the way of life. So I very strict with my uh, precepts. I know I'm, I'm always telling people that I don't drink, I don't uh, smoke, I don't kill animals and I don't lie. But anytime I find myself in a situation, people are people just forget about that. And I'm going to, the, uh, to be a guest to someone's house, they just take a drink. And I said, mm -hmm. but I already told you that I don't drink. You know, that's like maybe because of trad tradition and you know, killing the animals, I know that sometimes there are like five or six mosquitoes drinking my blood and people are like, why don't you kill it? Why don't you kill it? I said, oh, it's my dinner, you know, he's my guest for the dinner and just saying that they're like surprised because I have, uh, it's because of my patience and lying, you know, I have a, uh, because I'm meditating and uh, I, like, I, I like to uh, dedicate most of my life to the meditation and I found a job that it's like very easy. I'm a night guard and I'm mostly doing the night uh, uh, guarding of some uh, buildings and it's like in solitude and I can do the walking meditation on my job because it's demanding. And I know that sometimes, you know, I have a free day and my boss calls me and he's like, where are you now? And I'm just honest. I said, I'm home, but I know I sleep home because he wants me to go to work, <laughs> even it's not free day. <laughs> And I, I know that people around me just saying, why don't you say this, why don't you say that? You know, you're not at home. I said, I cannot do that, you know, that's lying. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, not, it's not easy to be honest with people, you know, because I'm going to use that. But then because of my uh, deep understanding of the practice, I just see that it's like uh, uh, complacency or conceit. So I know that, so I don't care because uh, through all my life, I was always outsider. The, 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 the society, he wants to be, uh, most of people, they don't, they want you to be like them, like drinking and smoking, you know, that's the, like, the only reasons they want you in your company. So uh, that was also one uh, hard side of my life because I was refused to do those things. And I was mostly uh, lonely, but now I don't care because uh, I kind of like loneliness because it gets me more time to practice my teachings uh, and my uh, do my practice. And I think that's 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 about it. Uh, I, I I can say more, but I want to give some other people a chance. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I was going to say that that like your experience with with taking on the precepts really resonated with me. Like I um. Before I began meditating, I thought of myself as a pretty moral, upstanding person. And then, you know, both sort of explicitly deciding to take on the precepts, but also just, um, you know, having the mindfulness to be aware of, of where my mind was as I was engaging in the world made a lot of my sort of day to day behaviors, you know, so clearly uh, horrendous to me. I mean, the, you know, killing insects, and I, I definitely have a lot of experience as a child, similarly, like, yeah, just being cruel to, to animals, um, and, yeah, and, and, like, lying in day-to-day -day life, um, you know, I had always thought of myself as an honest person, but, you know, when you start training in mindfulness, just the, the urge to make those, those casual lies to make things easier uh you just catch them you just catch them yeah, so much it's, easier it's much easier if you have your own experience when somebody lies to you and you say to yourself mate if, if i feel this bad when somebody's lying to me how does that person then feel if i lie to them you know like, did you find any of these changes come about uh maybe after you did a course or just uh generally maybe uh practicing on your own i'm sorry i missed if you said that you did a course or not um uh, 
before we, you were you were planning to go to India, and I thought I thought to talk to Austin, I think, yes, to you, and you thought, told me if I want to go to India that I have to take at home course with Bante. I finished it like five months ago. He said, you done that. if you want, you can go to, you can come to Canada to my home and had like 14 days retreat. And I said, I'm going to do that. But now because of the COVID and because mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for that situation to come down. So I hope that one day I'm going to end up being uh, in his presence. Anyone else who wants to ask Marco a question? No, I, I just want to to thank uh, anyone really uh, that um, they choose to be here and um, share their story. Uh, I think our community is a lot larger and we have uh, many shy students perhaps, but it's very, very nice to see uh, you, Marco, now because, uh, you know, you are kind of new to us. I, I've seen you a lot on uh, the Meditation Plus app, uh, meditating. I see many, many people there who I don't yet know, but I would like to know them as well. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just wonderful to know that uh, you are, st you are yeah, still I'm, other people. I'm usually, there. I'm usually there with you, but because my schedule is not constant, it's all over the place. So I want to go to the study group, but sometimes you do the study group in parts. So if I skip one, so I'm just, you know, when I find time, I'm going to join you. But now I usually work on Sunday and Saturday, so it's not possible. But I'm doing that meditation class every day yeah. because I bond at all, so I'm always there. Thank you so much for being yes, here thank and you so joining much. us. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, I wanna move on to Ricardo. Um, tell me about how, um, welcome, and tell me about how meditation has changed your life. Yeah, well, uh, when I first found Bantes videos, I was, as I heard uh, from other fellow meditators here, I was in, in a good place in my life. So I just wrote in Google, uh, how to meditate because I, in the back of my mind, I, I thought that I knew that meditation could help me to overcome uh, addictions. I used to drink a lot and smoke a lot. And as a way of life, I, I didn't, I didn't be, uh, realize the, da the damage I was impinging of my, on my mind, on my brain, on my body, right? Uh, because I was younger. So, but with the past of the years, I start realizing that the damage was real. So I put, I, put, I wrote that in, the, in Google. And at that time, the first video was Bantis, uh, HMT, no, HTM one. And that's it. I, I, start, I start doing it. I start uh, reading the booklet and I became as nowadays also uh, like not addict, but very fun to his podcast. Uh, he always bring me peace and, and with all, only with his voice, I can uh, figure out the right path or, or calm the anxiety. So, so yeah, that, that, that was my, my beginning. So it changed my life a lot in, I started in, 2016 and I was involved in a project I was trying to build from seven years before and I just quit uh, completely because I realized the futility of that goal is it, it was just ego increasing I was just to be I was I was I used to be a musician I, I had the band and I wanted to be famous right I was, I was a lot of people so I realized the futility of that goal uh, I, I ask myself, what if you accomplish what you want? Like you, you compose beautiful music and people like your music and people go to your concert and intoxicated with your music. So I said, uh, that was not a real uh, high lofty goal. So I really quit the band and quit a lot of friends, really, that's, as Marco said, they only wanted my company be because we drink 
we drank and we smoked and all that, all that thing, right? So since then, since then I wanted to, uh, well, it was like two months after I, I wrote that in Google, I found uh, Bantes, when I, I heard Bantes says that he's, he's offering a, a course, a pre-course in, in Canada. So I really wanted to go, but at that time I didn't have the resources. Uh, so I went to the, to the I, I talked with a, with a friend and talk, he, uh, she told me that there was a center of meditation at three hours from Mexico City where I live and it was Goencas. So I definitely went. I realized soon that the practice was not the, as uh, Sinciri Mangalo. However, I did, <laughs> I did focus in my stomach most of the time. And actually those courses, I, I finished the, the 10 course, 10 day course. And it helped me a lot in, in subsuming the pain because you have to sit one hour and then rest five minutes and then another hour and another, a lot of practice actually, 10 days. And just eat in the morning and tea in the evening. It was very hard, very hard. Not as hard as the termination days with Bante, right? But, but it was very hard. And I, I recommend that for anyone who wants to, to start the path and doesn't have the resources at the moment to go to, to Bante, with Bante, right? So it was until two years later that I could uh, schedule, uh, I could book a place in Hamilton with Bante. So I, I went with Bante, I, I met Javan, the, the steward at that moment, he was a great, great person. And uh, that's it, the first determination day was the hardest thing in my life. And it, it's always hard, right? Those days. <laughs> but yeah, I, my life has changed a lot. Actually, I think, I, I, I mean, maybe everyone can say that isn't, I am not in the place I want, but that place doesn't exist because we are all the always is changing, right? So we have to um, accustom to the vicissitudes of life, and and yeah, the meditation for me is like a, it's like a soap. If if I don't clean it every day, I start to to gather dirty, and I I know. So, uh, but I, I am really satisfied with it, with my practice because, as Pante says in plenty of videos, I kind of uh, settle the the habit of mindfulness. So even if I something trigger my angry, uh, there's a voice there. Uh, you're angry, 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 and I became more skillful to to, to deal with that, not to scream. Uh, before I knew uh, meditation. I thought it was a good thing to scream, to hurt people that hurt you, right? But that I, I, I saw the, the results of that and I, I, um, for, the good, for good, I changed. And yeah, well, I'm very, very happy to find this organization actually because I, I try to, to, to uh, invite the few friends I have, so, but they, they don't get it. I mean, there's, it's natural. I mean, there's, it's not for everyone and everyone has his own interests and his own karma. But I, I tell them that about the study group and about the course and the audio book, if you don't want to read it, there's an audio book. And they just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not, mm. anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy to be here with you guys. And I, I just have one question for Miguel, uh, Ricardo, right? You can tell me about how your uh, environment is reacting on you, you know? Like my mother, she just wants me to have a round because she's using always yell that and because I'm calm and always uh, supportive, she said that she feels good around, around me, you know? There are like many people who said that to me because I'm just always calm and if there's a problem, I always try to solve it with less violence or yelling, you know, that because this, there's a better solution. There's always, there always is, you know, not to yell. But I don't know if you ever met people in Croatia, but they, they like to yell a lot. They're like very angry people, especially on the, like, uh, 
uh, football games or somewhere, you know. So you know, I, I always find myself like an outsider because I'm not like that. I'm not like uh, very cheering on, uh, like I don't post sports or stuff like that because they are mostly violent. I'm, I live near the stadium and they're always fighting there. And I was like, what's wrong with these people, you know? Just a game, you know? So you can tell me about your environment, how we act to your, you know, being meditative person. Yeah, of course. So I think uh, my environment is not very different as, as yours because yes. of mainstream culture. So mm -hmm. yeah, I feel I feel alone actually, but now is is good. Is it's better I, I take advantage of that solitude because, well, in, in my family, actually, I try to teach them. The only person who continues is my mother. And when I got her home, I, we meditate like 20, 21 minutes. I don't know if she's doing well, but she has read the, the booklet, he, heard the booklet, and now she read the enlightenment in Spanish. So she's, She's kind of, she's kind of proud of my change also, and my sister and my nieces. Even I, I try to teach them. They don't, they didn't continue, but, but they see a change. I can see that if you want change, change uh, the the environment changes also. So they don't see me drinking anymore or smoking, uh, or yelling or something like that. I, I'm a very tranquil person, and. Yeah, outside, I know what you mean. Everything is about buying and drinking and, and like uh, intoxic intoxicated with, with anything. I can be not drugs, can be uh, entertainment or or beauty or so, something or, all, all about that. And I think some people so see, see me or sees me as maybe as I'm not successful because I don't do, because I, I am not uh, after the things they, they are, like the cars and the, the, the nice clothes and all, the, all that, I think I overcome it. But sometimes I feel bad. I, I feel like a bit angry of that I know I'm right, but they know, they think they are right. All that, all that thing that I'm just say uh, disgust, disliking, 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 and yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's my environment. Yeah, I know. I know it's hard because you are you are uh, letting go so many things in your life, and people are like surprised. They don't uh, like. I'm not. I'm not invited anymore on weddings, on funerals, or anything because they don't know that I, I'm usually just there in the corner, just sitting, you know, just waiting for the pass, you know, just being polite and. I know that people are uh, asking me, you know, out and, you know, when we're going to eat and how is this? And I said, it was eatable. You know, that's just most important thing that you can do with food. Just if it's good for you, you know, just eat it. Don't, don't you know, be picky because, you know, there are so many people who are hungry around you and you're just speaking here, you know, you have such a privilege to, uh, you know, choose your food. And most of it, it's like thrown away. So... It's, it's kind of sad for me to watch that every day, you know, because, because people just buy a lot and just throw away uh, because of the negligence. Mm. And just they have a choice. That was always my biggest problem uh, with society because they have a lot of choice. Some people don't have any choice and some people have a lot. That's, that's, that's the biggest problem. That's awesome. <laughs> um, Ricardo, I'd like to hear your experience with volunteering at the center i understand you volunteered at the center for some time yeah last year uh, 2020 actually i i started there one year ago exactly like the 14th of february and i i got there actually i wonder why didn't we didn't meet in the street because i i know you are a, a neighbor of the of the center so yes it was it was a, an amazing experience uh, because I I used to cook here in my home, but not that much, not daily at the same hour, six months. And I mean, that that was cool. And the environment, I mean, it's a lot of things because when I get in February, we had a, a calendar, full calendar until August. Yeah. But in March, 
they was cancel everything. So I just met three meditators. They finished their, their course and some, I think just one finished completely. One guy, uh, when the determined determine, uh, days started, he flew away. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, and, and after that, you, I was just alone. Well, with Shraddha, at, at the three months with Shraddha and Bhante, just, just that. Mm -hmm. So it, I had a, a lot of time to be mindful, actually. And I, I enjoy to, to walk in, at the nights, uh, bare feet. And in the, we were, there are a lot of grass there and very beautiful park. And also after eating, I used to have a, a walk. And I mean, I mean the, the chores at the monastery is, they are not too, too, too big. I, they are not too much. After giving at 11 Bantes meal, we can say we are cleaning in the kitchen. We are like free, right? But free for what? We, we, we cannot do anything there. So it, it helped me a lot to be, to, to be with myself, to, to develop patience and uh, every day, actually, and my cooking skills also improved. Yeah, <laughs> also the cleaning skill and I met wonderful people. I met uh, volunteers, local volunteer from there that before I had to book a cab to, to go to Sears and, and buy these things for Bante. And after I met uh, Graziana, she, she offered and she, every two weeks, she came and go to the shopping and, and we talk about the practice and it was, was wonderful. Yeah, I recommend that. that you, you also had the time to uh, do um, review co courses as well, right? Uh, yeah, I did a, one review. Now I regret because I should have done more, uh, maybe even the instructional course, if Bante agreed, but yeah. well, I didn't, I didn't. I was a bit, a bit uh, over, overwhelmed by meditation. So I, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I didn't know that was gonna happen, but yeah, I, well, I did one review. It's not a full, re it's, it's not like when there's another steward because I still had to cook and go Oh. go out or for the letters the post or something like that but i did my best and i i think at the end i i i achieved i achieved the goal and maybe okay thank you so much for sharing ricardo i really appreciate it who would like to answer how meditation has changed their life who would like to go next Dev. yeah <laughs> you want me to go okay sure <laughs> I would love to share. Um, wow, my life is completely different. Um, you know, before meditation, I was just like every, you know, a lot of people, I was drinking, doing <laughs> drugs, listening to music, dancing, singing, lots of watching sports, lots of watching TVs and music and, you know, um, just all these things to keep busy quote unquote you know to, to pass the time and I, I thought I was happy but I really wasn't and when I hit rock bottom that was when I was just really like okay this isn't working I can't keep doing the same thing thinking that this is going to get any better so that's when I turned to meditation and it's completely changed my life I you know I'm able to keep most uh, all of, you know most of the eight precepts you know and I, I don't have a TV I don't watch t news I don't listen to music or dance or sing anymore I, I you know people are like oh do you want to go out here and it's like um, no I just don't participate in those anything th uh, that anymore and they're like oh oh okay <laughs> and a lot of people have no idea what to even say um, they you know uh, when the pandemic hit, I, uh, a lot of people were, you know, suffering from being lonely and being isolated and being disconnected. I live on a farm, <laughs> um, very far away from most people. I'm pretty much by myself all day. You know, I don't have any neighbors lurking through my windows or walking by. There's no one ever walking by because it's a long, very long driveway um, to the road. So I have a lot of privacy. And I thought to myself, the pandemic doesn't really change my life in terms of isolation and all that stuff. 
And in terms of feeling lonely, I feel so connected to life and to others that I don't actually feel lonely. Um, I feel more love and gratitude towards everything and everyone. And so it's really changed my mindset. The other thing about keeping the precepts that I know now that I didn't know before, I thought they were just a set of rules that you're supposed to follow to be um, a good person. But really what I understood was that these precepts were, 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 are in place for you to have a clear mind. All the, all the things that go against the precepts cloud your mind, prevent you from seeing clearly. And I just didn't understand that. Now that I understand how these things can fog your mind and, and, your, and, your, and what you see or what you can see, it makes a lot of sense to me. And I, I have so much appreciation and gratitude for the ability to just be mindful. And um, I spend most of my days, most of my time here in, you know, in different areas of the house, I guess, just meditating, walking, meditating, because um, I don't really do anything else in terms of like entertainment or anything. So I, I'm very content doing it. Um, that's how it's really changed my life. It's, it's you know, I try to, I, I, I get what you mean when you know, try to share with other people. People are going to respond the way that they're where they're at in their life and, and you know um maybe maybe they will do it maybe they won't maybe they will do it in this lifetime maybe they'll do it in another lifetime we can never choose for them but we can always set an example and we can always be a role model and we can always have it in within ourselves to, to practice and to show well okay if you don't want to do it you can do it your way if you're happy truly happy you can do it your way i'm going to do it my way i've done your way I know what that's like, and it didn't make me happy. I'm going to do this way, and it's made me so peaceful and calm, and people can really see that. People can see when they meet me how happy and calm and um, just full of light and joy that they gravitate towards me, that they, that they want to know more about what's going on with this person, like what, is, what are they doing? And so well, for those people, I'm very open Oh, to share my experience and what I've been through and how meditation has helped me. And this is why I love talking to these in these videos um, because I love to share and I, and I just hope to inspire the people, inspire those who are really ready for, uh, to take this on. Um, and for those who aren't ready to take it on, I say, well, you know, you have the rest of your life or lives to do that. Mm -hmm. So enjoy, <laughs> if you will. It's kind of funny these times when people are isolated, meditation can help them a lot. And I'm just reading in the news, you know, people have anxiety and they are depressed and they have PTSD. And I'm saying, you know, uh, this meditation is teaching us how to face ourselves and our desires. And they are just, uh, most of the people who don't meditate, they just sit at home. They just want, oh man, I want to go there. I want to speak to that person. I don't, I want to, uh, if I talk to him, I'm going to feel better, you know, just they just they just they just, they, they just don't want to face their, their themselves. They just want to you know socialize and uh, indulge. So that's the easiest way to uh, to escape from uh, the fear of isolation. Exactly. <laughs> I was just gonna say escape. They're all looking to escape, but there is no escaping this. There's only facing it, and they're not capable of facing it because they just don't have the practice of that developing that and cultivating the skill to be able to face whatever it is that they want to say. You, know, know, during the you see like a teenager and he said he said he said he said I have a PTSD and I'm said oh my god like 20 years ago that was only got in the war you know you're not even in any war you know you have PTSD like, it's, right. It's so funny. right right <laughs> yeah I mean I think uh you know people are going to be, the, I think the mainstream are going to do the things that they know to do, and which is l l things that we know as, as meditators, they, they don't, they're not, they're not sufficient, you know, in alleviating your suffering and your pain. And so when I hear people say that, oh, well, I can't wait to go home and have a glass of wine to, to escape from all this pandemic. It's like, what? that's not the answer or you know they you know people will say oh I can't wait to go to the movies I wish if I went to the movies or if I went to a bar or a club that would make that would be that would solve all my issues mm -hmm. um and it's like well that's not really but okay <laughs> it's hard to convince people otherwise
Yes. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, before the meditation, you have like all these dreams and desires and your goals you want to uh, accomplish in your life. But once you become meditation, like I, I let go of the desire of having a family or dating or everything because I, I find myself like thinking, you know, it's hard for me to indulge my desires and how I'm going to indulge somebody else's. So does anybody have the same problem? It's not a problem, but I know that that usually comes with meditation. So. Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. I uh, who would like to answer? Well, I think this um, this sort of goes into some of the answer that I was planning on sharing anyway, um, because I I do have a family and I had my first child uh, just just before uh, discovering meditation and. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been an interesting experience balancing the life of a householder with, uh, with my meditative understanding. Um, you know, I am, I'm maintaining a family and, and continuing those close ties, but, um, yeah, but like the way that I, the attachment I feel to my relationships uh, I think it's just of a very different nature now. Um, you know, we often talk about uh, love and, and caring for others as a very noble thing, but it's, it's usually, in my experience at least, you know, before I was meditating and discovering the Dhamma, um, you know, the the love that I felt for others was often so much tied up in, in my personal wants and my needs and my, my desire for a connection. Um, and, and I found that, right, that through meditation, those relationships, uh, you know, with my family, with my friends, with the people I live with, um, those have all been, been strengthened and improved because they're not, they're not being shaped by my attachment. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm in a very different situation than a lot of people in the world right now in that I, I live closely with quite a few people um, in a community farm situation. Uh, so while I think uh, for many people, um, you know, many of us discovering meditation is a place where we can sort of help physically come to grips with, with the isolation of, of modern society. Uh, for me, a lot of it was coming to grips with the, the difficult social interactions that, um, that I face day to day. And, you know, I think when I first picked up meditation, I was like, I was aware how hard it was, you know, this is not, um, not a world that, that supports, you know, intense meditation practice and living by the Dhamma day to day. Uh, and there is, um, you know, there's a temptation to, to physically remove myself, which I think, you know, many, uh, many monastics take the, take the noble path of, of doing so. Um, but, yeah, just the fruits of, of meditation are universally applicable. Um, there's, there's value in physical isolation in the training, but, but when you have the techniques of mindfulness and you, you know, like Ricardo was saying, when those just become the, the moment to moment habits that you take on, uh, all of the, the difficulty of, of life around me just becomes that much easier. Um, yeah, similarly, I've, I've at times just wished that everyone around me would, would adopt a similar meditation practice and then we would, we would all live in, in peace and harmony. Um, but, you know, it's not... Uh, we, we don't have yeah. any chance to learn from each other if we are the same. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, you know, I think, like, I, before getting into meditation, I had sort of a very materialistic, secular outlook. Um, but having 
at least sort of taking on the long view of, of Buddhist cosmology and sort of seeing the way that um, that our causes and conditions and comma are very complex and um, you know and follow us from life to life. I I am very much you know more able to accept everyone else where they are. You know everyone's uh, on their own path. You know which isn't to say that everyone's headed in the right direction, um, but it's just it's you know it's um, with mindfulness it's just so much easier to to love love people wherever they are uh, in in a way that that isn't dependent on you know what I'm getting from them or or how nice they are to me and just uh, you know in the same way that I've learned to appreciate you know the the lives of um, of non-human animals and and realizing that I don't want to harm or kill them uh, I can feel that way about about all of the people around me even even when our interaction is difficult. And Elder, how is your family taking care, uh, taking that you are meditating? Do they, do they give you a lot of time for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Uh, I think my, my partner was, uh, was definitely skeptical at first. Uh, you know, she's a very caring person, so was willing to, you know, roll with me on this this sort of new adventure, uh, and yeah, she didn't like it at first. I think she was she was worried that I would change and become a different person, which in many ways I have. Um, and you know, and similarly, like there are friends. You know, I just don't have all the same sort of connections that I used to because many of those connections were based around, uh, you know, partying and, and drinking and doing drugs and whatnot. Um, but, but I do think, you know, in my immediate family, um, and in, in my social environment, uh, you know, people have seen the way I changed and, and do like that. Um, I think that, yeah, like the people who know me best uh, can see that I am much happier and I'm a, I'm a more pleasant to per person to be around. I think not in that I'm, you know, a fun party goer anymore, but uh, I like to think that, you know, I'm kinder and calmer and, um, and can, yeah, and not as driven by my own conflict and, and able to support others as, as they need it. Uh, the time, time wise, I, I definitely get the impression that I have uh, less time to meditate than some of the other, uh, other volunteers and people in our community. Uh, I just try to make sure to get up before my kid wakes up and, uh, and meditate and, and meditate before or before I go to bed. Um, so I try to sort of, you know, I don't sleep as much as as the rest of my family. Um, I think in large part because of my meditation practice. So that's that's where I'm able to to get that time in, you know, as well as as well as trying to to meditate in every moment. You know, just noting throughout the day uh, is just just a really powerful way to to get that meditation time in. Yeah. I do want to say, in my case, as much as my social life changed in in the way I'm spending my time, uh, most of the relationships that I have are are with the same people, and and those relationships have sort of gone through a transformation. Um, but I think, you know, and I think they would even agree that that the meditation practice has only only helped. You know, even my friends who who I had originally become close with as drinking buddies, um, having this practice has allowed me to relate to them on uh, in a different way that that I think has has mm -hmm. proved really fruitful. Mm -hmm. 
and also you know the people who already know you before this like i only know you um the very wholesome adder who has all the time and and uh, i have no idea who that other person or that past person was so um yeah they they probably have a harder time you know believing that this is possible i'm i'm hearing a lot of the, the time that uh, for example, Christians or other other type of believers uh, don't really believe that you can change. Like they really hold the belief that, oh no, you can uproot certain things like addiction or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna get into it in this talk, maybe another talk, okay. but I, okay. I, I, uh, I was raised Christian and and the just the difference in attitude about yeah, what I can accomplish on my own and, and mm. who's going to save me is, um, yeah, it's stark. Totally in, different in conversation. Contrast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to me, to me, it's very nice to hear that, uh, for example, Adder can live in a relationship and have kids and, uh, you know, he, he can still continue his life. He is social. He is and and at the same time he still sees reality clearly as daylight right and uh that's that's something very few people can do actually and um more of us uh, you know stay single and mind our business and no one no one criticizes us or wants to change us back well, since we have you talking, Edit, I want to hear your story. What, how has meditation changed your life? I look at this. What did uh, meditation make, make me lose? Like, uh, it's not what I gained, but what I lost. Um, and I lost self-pity. I lost confusion, comparing myself to others, uh, competition the drive to compete. And um, so I had this um, weird thing, a weird relationship with believing in things. Like I, uh, I'm a very uh, scientific, scientific minded person and I need proof. I need uh, something that works every time uh, when you applied, apply to it and um, so for me, believing in something was like a difficult task and almost impossible task, I would say. And, um, but at the same time, I, I had this feeling that uh, the word can be known. Like I had this underlying question all the time, uh, what am I doing here? What, what is the purpose of this? And um, I, yeah. Um, I, I knew that um, things can be found out and definitely after the meditation courses, uh, when wisdom came, then uh, a lot of the things become so clear and so simple and so understandable. And, and uh, there was no, there were no mysteries in it that um, you had to believe in this or that. It, it was just uh, like a math equation or basically basically a lot of things uh, changed for me, of course. Um, society or family thought me that I need to have, you know, relationships and family and, um, and I was sort of um, wanting them and almost striving for them. And, um, and it, I got so relaxed that, oh, I, you don't need to do that or you don't have to um, live in, a, in the way that other people live. So I don't have to become a wife. I don't have to become a mother. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I wanted to add to uh, when you were talking about confusion um, and uh, so how it was before and after, um, mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Um, I feel like after the my first uh, intensive course, I felt like 
I, I know exactly how I got to where I, I was at the time, but before I wasn't sure. Uh, so the cause and effect, you do this, this happens, was just so clear to me. And just looking back, I was able to pinpoint every decision that led me to where I was. And it was clear as day, no mystery. I mean, you were killing, stealing, lying, and cheating. Why are you, and taking drugs and alcohol, why are you confused <laughs> where you are? So, um, yeah, and uh, just looking back, it felt, if I were to compare, um, I would say that I was trying to put together a puzzle that had half of the pieces missing and I'm trying to put it together, but the pieces are missing. You can't, you won't succeed. Um, so now at least I have the pieces. I feel like I have all the pieces for sure. I, have, I still have to put the puzzle together, but I know there are no missing pieces. I can see that they're all there. Wow, it's very powerful. Uh, when you said, Edith, that you lost this uh, sense of self-pity and comparison, would you say that whatever triggered that sense of self-pity and comparison, now if the same situation comes, it does not trigger it at all, or it sometimes triggers it and sometimes doesn't trigger it, or maybe the uh -huh. intensity of the trigger is less? So I don't want to make this uh, answer complicated, but it, it's basically related to non-self. Um, obviously so when you lose this sense of self when you when you really can see that um you are i mean there is only experience and there is no me then um even even my you know disability is just an experience and not mine or not me and this is not my life or i mean it is <laughs> but um, it, it, it really drops out the I part and it doesn't make sense. Um, you, you have the wisdom, you know, and, and it doesn't make sense to compare at all. Like it doesn't. And the self-pity as well. Like if you pity yourself, then what? And if you don't, I mean, uh, no one suffers if you, if you compare to yourself um to others it's only you or you know you punish yourself or even if if uh, self-pity comes up um it doesn't anymore but it, if it comes up for a for an for a normal person then uh it's just you punishing yourself it's just you um making it even harder to experience what you have to experience anyway without uh, without no one is going to give you another experience that's your experience you know you have to be objective about it and self-pity isn't it's subjective very powerful yes so so good does anyone else have any questions for edit austin austin i want to hear how meditation has changed your life it's put me on YouTube, something that I never thought. No, but that's that's how Jeff Jeff has changed my life in that respect, not meditation. <laughs> so, um, medit yeah, um, I would say I find myself much less currently worried about the past or the future in comparison to how I used to be worried about the past and the future. So that is one thing for sure. And the second thing is that if there is something that does stress me out, then the time period that it stresses me out for is much, much less than uh, in comparison to the past. I mean, how, how it was before. So I think these two things uh, has, uh, I, I think uh, I, would, I would pinpoint as, as good benefits. Uh, less worry about the past and the future and uh, less, uh, you know, uh, stress about anything that does stress also uh, for a less amount of time. Did your um, priorities change? Like, uh, 
before and yeah. you yeah yeah they did change uh <laughs> in the sense that um um, my priority is to do whatever I, I, I need to do right now and not uh, worry so much about the result, like whatever that would be, uh, whether it's X, Y, or Z, I mean, that would have been a very big priority for me. Um, now, you know, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I, you know, wherever the chips fall, uh, that's fine. Uh, you know, focus on doing the right thing is more important rather than before it was more like um, the end is more important uh, and the priority was the end. Um, you know, the mean was, uh, you know, you do your best or whatever, but the end, as, as long as the end comes, right? Uh, now it is more like, um, you know, you let the chips fall where they may, but you focus on doing the right thing. So the priority has changed on, on doing whatever is the right thing to do rather than, uh, worry about what will whether things will go your way or not. Sure, mm -hmm. definitely very wide wise advice. Okay, so thank you all for sharing. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to come forth, share their stories, and uh, be a part of this wonderful community and this uh, Sri Mangalo series that we just launched. Uh, next week, we'll uh, have another group of people. Um, again, if you want to join us, feel free to message um, any one of us, message edit or message myself or adder on Discord, um, and we can set this up for you. Or if you are shy and you want, but you still wanna share your stories, we encourage you to write in and email us and we will, I would love to read your story out loud for the rest of the world to hear. So with that said, thank you so much for joining and we will see you again next week. Bye for now. Take care.